18. Oh my gosh, this number is so big. Total newbie drone mistakes that I've made that you can learn from coming up. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Christine and this is Create with CL where I give away all of my secrets on what goes behind being a travel creator. And one of my tools is my drone. I'm currently traveling in Tulum, Mexico and sweating my butt off. And I'm gonna share with you all the dumbest things I've done with my drone in this video. So if you want more content like this, consider subscribing. Number one is not having all of my equipment. So I actually forgot the cord that goes into my phone. And so one thing for you to do is to make sure you have a checklist of all the things you need to bring every time you go out to fly. But this stemmed from my second stupidest thing, which I was trying to fly my drone without having a case. Since I'm a non-stop travel creator, I didn't want to have a case because it took up more space. But one of the things about having a case, I have one now, is that you can keep all of your items together and not have to worry about that checklist. So make sure you have a case and make sure when you fly your drone, you have all the things that you need with you. The next dumbest thing is around battery life and not leaving myself enough time to land my drone. So I was flying my drone from a water bike looking at manatees in Crystal River and my drone was out of batteries and I wasn't bringing it in soon enough. So make sure you're giving yourself enough time to get back, my drone was landing in the water before I could get to it. I got to it in time. But don't push your luck on the battery time. And the next biggest mistake about battery is I wasn't location scouting. So in other words, I would just throw my drone up and waste the battery looking for a good shot versus location scouting. So make sure you check out my video about that so you can save your battery and not waste it on that activity. The next one is I thought that I could charge the battery while driving between locations and using a portable battery charger. This thing did not give it any juice. So I recommend just getting extra spare battery so you don't even have to worry about it. Which by the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button and consider subscribing. The next one, make sure you have enough room on your SD card. There's so many times I've put my drone up in the beginning and realized I didn't have any room to take photos and videos. So make sure you have a completely empty SD card before you go out flying. Let's talk about a few that are really embarrassing for me, kind of as embarrassing as how much I'm sweating right now. But the next one's around almost losing it to the wind. So my first drone was a Mavic Mini and one of the things about it is it's very lightweight. So on very windy days, it can get pushed around. The tip for you here is that on a windy day, consider flying it in sport mode when you're trying to get it to return back to you quickly. By having it going faster, you can really fight the wind and get your drone back home safely. And speaking of home, here's another dumb one. The time that I crashed my drone was inside the house. So consider if you're inside of a house or inside of something that's a structure, like a parking structure where it's hard to get GPS, your drone might have a hard time staying still. And so my drone was kind of floating around in the house because it was having a hard time getting signal and it just crashed into the wall, which was kind of a, just a lame, dumb thing that you shouldn't do. This next one I had to pay for in mosquito bites. What I mean by that is before you leave the house, make sure that you update all of your firmware on your drone. So in other words, I was ready to launch my drone from a kayak and I realized that I couldn't fly until I downloaded the latest firmware. But because I didn't have the best connection, I was sitting in that kayak for 35 minutes getting bitten by bugs and waiting for my drone to update. And I didn't have any spare sunscreen or extra snacks or water. So don't be me. And the opposite of being too hot is being too cold. So one time I flew until my hands were literally blue. So make sure you're taking care of yourself while you're flying. What I mean by that is I was snowmobiling and I was getting sweet shots in the snow, but I, I wasn't, I was so absorbed in what I was doing that I wasn't really paying attention to how I was feeling. And my hands were literally frozen by the time I brought my drone in. And when I was trying to hand land that thing in the snow, my hands were shaking so badly I wasn't sure if my drone was gonna fall apart or my hand was gonna fall apart and the other thing that happened on that same trip I was snowmobiling I made the mistake of thinking I could fly my drone in a place that I didn't have any service you need to have service so your drone can pick up the GPS signals etc etc and so make sure you have service before you get all excited set up and think you can fly a drone but you can't these next three are about mistakes I've made on photos and videos and the first one is not taking any photos there are so so many times I will throw my drone up and take amazing videos, but forget to take a single photo. And you don't want to have to be screenshotting a video, reducing the quality because you didn't take a photo. Make sure you leave time for both photos and videos. And by the way, if you're taking a video, this might sound really dumb, but it happens because I get really absorbed in some of the amazing things I'm looking at. Make sure you actually press record. And the whole point of all of these is to be able to tell a story. So don't make the mistake that I used to 
make, which is not getting an establishing shot. There's so many times I'm sharing beautiful Instagram stories of something specific that I saw, but without context of like, where are you? What is that? Why did you see that? You need that establishing shot before you can zoom in on some of the cool details of a place that you're at. This next one is around needing to slow down. Although your drone can fly very quickly, there's really almost no need to fly it quickly, except when you're trying to get to and from a location where you want to shoot. And so making sure that you're using smooth and slow gimbal movements, as well as slow flying. There's nothing worse than trying to tell a story with tricky movements and giving your viewer a headache while they're watching your beautiful drone shots. And this next one, don't get so high. What I mean by that is even though your drone can fly up to 400 feet legally, you don't need to keep it so high up. It's amazing to have that really high perspective, but one of the mistakes I used to make is I used to throw it up to the 300, 400 feet and then take all my photos and videos from there. When a lot of the times now, I might be getting a lot of my shots at 30 to 40 feet. And this next one for you is after you get those amazing shots, especially on a windy day. Even though your drone might be taking a slow, smooth shot, your horizon might be crooked because of the wind. And so make sure as you're editing those photos and videos, you're correcting the horizon so it's not crooked. A lot of my early YouTube videos have a crooked horizon. I think you've noticed the people behind me enjoying the pool. I think it's time to end this video here. I've had so much fun filming it. Cheers that like button if you haven't already already, consider signing up for my newsletter and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.